Bowen. I'm making this announcement in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, Laws of the State of New Jersey. The borough clerk has referred a schedule of the meetings of the governing body of the borough of Kenilworth for the year 2024. The borough clerk has posted a true copy of the schedule on the bulletin board located at the front entrance of Borough Hall and has mailed true copies of the schedule to the local source, the Star Ledger, and the Home News Tribune and is maintaining a copy of the schedule in her office during the year 2024. Accordingly, the notice requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act have been satisfied in regard to this meeting. Please stand for the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, finance report. Councilman uh, Finistrella. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, really not much to speak about uh, except for right now currently the uh, auditors are going through the uh, debt and financial statements and our uh, CFO is uh, now working on the budget. And that's pretty much it. Okay, thank you, Councilman. Uh, Department of Public Works, Councilman Boyle. Okay, sorry. Um, okay. We collected and disposed of 244 tons of municipal solid waste for a total cost of $18,232. Collected and transported 15 yards of wood chips for a total cost of $188. $188. Collected and transported three yards of tree parts for a total cost of $68. Collected and transported 12 yards of mixed vegetation for a total cost of $270. Um, responded to two sewer calls for a total of eight hours. Responded to a shared service with Cranford emergency sewer call for a total of 1.5 hours. Uh, Kenilworth Department of Public Works mechanic has completed our salt truck rebuild project that began during the summer. Uh, 2024 DPW information guide has recently been mailed out. Flyer list updates lists updates and changes for 2024 to some services from the way things occurred in 2023. We now accept the drop-off block, styrofoam, oil filters, reusable shopping bags, fluorescent tubes, plastic bags, textiles, and more. Uh, the 2024 DPW information flyer is posted on the website. Uh, DPW street sweeper schedule suspended during leaf season has resumed in January. 2024 weekly vegeta vegetative waste pickup will now occur on Thursdays instead of Wednesdays. This change will allow crews more time to complete the weekly borough-wide recycling pickups. The next borough-wide recycling pickup of bottles, cans, and type one and two and five plastics that occurs every other Tuesday will be Tuesday, January 23rd. Uh, the next borough-wide cardboard paper recycling pickup occurring every other Tuesday will be on Tuesday, January 30th. Cardboard must be bundled together, either stuffed snugly into bigger boxes or tied together or taped to allow uh, for manageable pickup. Loose cardboard will not be picked up. Paper can be stored in cardboard boxes or 32-gallon cans. And that's it. Thank you, Councilman. Um, please forgive me, everyone. I forgot to do uh, roll call. <laughs> I jumped ahead. <laughs> Mayor Karlovich? Present. Councilman Boyle? Here. Councilman Finistrella? Here. Councilwoman Giordana Perserno? Here. Councilman Moore? Here. Councilman Scaris? Here. Councilman Zimmerman? Here. Thank you. Uh, Department of Public Safety, Councilman Zimmerman. Thank you, Mayor. I have a report from our Chief of Police, Fred Seuss. For the month of December, Kenworth Police Department responded to 867 calls for service, and there were 126 911 calls, calls totaled for the month. There were a total of 450 hours of overtime for December, primarily for scheduled patrol overtime, which was 312 hours, dispatch 132 hours, and court overtime of six hours. County Police Department completed 148 hours of training for the month, which included training for use of force, defensive tactics, and training for our updated CAD system, Lawsoft. <coughs> County 
Howard Police Department also issued 144 traffic summonses for the month of December. There were four sick days used for the month and two sick occurrences. There were also no on-the-job injuries reported for the month of December. December was a busy, busy month to end the year. As the Calvert Police Department, units were dispatched to 10 to 12 motor vehicle burglaries, car thefts, and catalytic converter thefts. Calvert Police Department units also engaged in a half a dozen pursuit of stolen vehicles, most of which were alerts from our flock camera system at the Boulevard of Michigan. These emboldened, these incidents have become more and more commonplace as criminals have become more emboldened and they are extremely dangerous encounters. I'm sure most residents are aware of the officer involved shooting which occurred over the New Year's weekend, which involved an officer from our neighboring town of Cranford. The Cranford officer chased a stolen van, which was a flock alert in their town, which crashed in Woodbridge, and the driver opened fire on the Cranford police officer, striking him in the arm. The officer returned fire, killing the suspect, and was able to apply a tourniquet to his own wounds. Calvert Police Department would like to send our thoughts and prayers to that officer with wishes for a speedy recovery. The Police Department is also investigating three catalytic converter thefts which occurred in mid-December on the north side of town. All three thefts were done in under a minute and patrol units gave chase in one instance but were unable to apprehend the suspects. The Police Department is also investigating a theft of $15,000 from a Fairfield Avenue business. We believe the person was targeted by a ring that follows individuals who make large cash withdrawals from banks and then distracts the person or uses force to commit the robbery. Residents are advised to be aware of their surroundings when taking large sums of money to and from the bank. As the new year begins, the police department will be busy filling several vacancies in the department. They've put out employment notifications for three transfer officers and a dispatcher to fill open vacancies which were caused by retirements, which take a place of, and are, take effect on February 1st. We'll also be interviewing shortly to promote officers to fill the vacancies of captain, lieutenant, and sergeant positions sometime after February 1st. Uh, Chief of Police Fred Seuss wanted to come up and fill the community in on another uh, topic. Chief Seuss. Thank you, Commissioner. Mayor Kornovich, members of council, I uh, just want to point out a couple of things. Hey, that, uh, that pursuit and shooting in Cranford uh, was an individual that we had locked up previously. So that's something that could very easily have happened in, the, in this town. It happened maybe three miles away from us. It was a flock hit in their town, and this is the sort of thing that's going on all the time. So this is the kind of thing that's in, in our communities on a negative, just about a nightly basis. Um, moving on to some better news, I just want to alert Mayor and Council of some uh, what I consider to be excellent police work that's been done. Uh, I didn't have a chance to talk to Jill and Kenny about this, but the first matter I think is pretty good news for us. Uh, the borough clerk uh, alerted us to, before we left the Gordon State GIF, there was a grant opportunity for departments that have been accredited to recoup some of their reaccreditation fees. Uh, I assigned Lieutenant Bryson to look into this, and he put a tremendous amount of time and effort into getting receipts, invoices, what have you, and was able to get us almost $11,000 awesome. of reimbursement for our re last reaccreditation cycle. And we're working on getting actually more money this uh, this cycle when we, we, uh, we go for reaccreditation again. So I just want to give kudos to uh, Lieutenant Bryson. I see he put you know, hundreds of hours into working on, maybe not hundreds, but dozens of hours into working on this to recoup some money for the town. That's wonderful. Uh, another incident I just want to bring up to you, and I know Mayor Kovic, this is something that's uh, near and dear to your own heart. You guys were all aware that we now have an officer who's assigned to the Alive program. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to bring to attention some very good police work that Ray, Ray Fashino did the other day. We had an individual who um, uh, who's kind of fallen through the cracks and he's been pushed along uh, through many different social services. He was recently placed up in North Bergen, uh, which is about 20 miles away from where his family and friends are. And a lot of us know him from the Michigan Deli. He does little side jobs in Michigan Deli, so we know him from down there. Last week, he walked here from North Bergen, 
22 miles overnight and he left, walked overnight without any food, walked overnight, got to Rosa Park, Rosa Park apartment to us. He knows a lot of our guys. I signed Officer Fashino to get him some help and through his contacts in the ARRIVE program, was able to get him down to the county. Uh, he was able to bypass a lot of the red tape, got him a, a social worker who is assigned to him permanently now got him housing close by in Elizabeth, and was able to actually get him about $600 on an EBT card so he could eat. Oh, I had to eat for two days, and we now have him permanent residence. We got him some clothes, and we got him some food. He was so thankful. When Officer Fashino left, he spent probably four or five hours with him. He actually broke down into tears that uh, Officer Fashino was leaving. And this is just an example of this ARRIVE program working as it should to help people who have fallen between, between the cracks and need, some, and need some help. And he follows up on him every week when he comes in to do the ARRIVE program. He follows up on this individual to let him know that we're still here for him to help him with anything he does need. The mayor had also brought up to me an individual, a resident in town, who was sleeping in her car and was having issues. Officer Fashino was also able to get her some help. We now have an aide who stays with her. Her house has been cleaned out. Uh, any of the issues over there have been remediated. She's taking her medicine. She's healthy. Okay, she's wonderful. eating. And it's been another success story of having some good contacts through this ARRIVE program to get our residents some help uh, instead of you know, arresting our way out of a problem that isn't worthy of being arrested. Mm -hmm. So Ray's doing a phenomenal job with this. He's, uh, he's been a great example for our town and for our police department. When the county and the state, he's been recognized for, by our prosecutor's office, by the AG's office, and he's doing some excellent, excellent police work. That's awesome. You know, we do, we do the protect the issue, he's doing the serve, the protect and serve, and it's, it's a, a twofold thing. And I'm exceptionally proud of him. So I just want to bring too. that to your attention. Thank you so much. I want to thank you guys. Making and I'm glad the daughters. woman is doing well. Yeah. 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 I want to thank you guys for your support, as always, for my department. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Chief. Excellent. Well, that makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. Else? Just one last thing, uh, just to everybody in town, just make sure that you lock your cars and uh, keep an eye out since the catalytic converters are still being stolen off of cars. Um, if you see somebody around a car that doesn't belong there in one of your neighbor's cars, they could be looking to steal it, like uh, the chief said in his monthly report. Car thefts are up, not just here, Cranford, everywhere around the state and county. So we need your help to keep an eye out. We can't be everywhere at any given time. So especially at nighttime, if you see somebody, you know, please call the police department so that we can get there and try and stop these types of activity that criminals are doing in our community. That's it, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, planning and zoning, uh, Councilman Morrow. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'll begin with planning, where the board currently has about three, exactly three applications in the works, and they're all at various stages in their review process. We have a few requests for variance applications that will come to the board when the applicants are ready. And based on this limited information, we could predict a lot of activity in the upcoming quarter for that board. Uh, so more to come on that. Administratively, last year, Wanda Grimaldi, who works in our borough office here as the planning board secretary, uh, or does a lot of work, clerk work for that, um, she's been doing a lot of work around reconciling the escrow accounts from last year, and we've hit a milestone of having them all reconciled. So there's some resolutions that will be passed to return some of the unused escrow to the builders. That'll happen through the planning work, uh, board, but I would like to say nice work, Wanda. Thank you. That was a year in the making. Uh, for zoning and code enforcement, we had the lightest month in December since I've been around on the council for a year now, where zero activity had happened. Very quiet month, which is good. No complaints. Um, we also saw very limited activity in zoning applications last month, mostly just fences and some businesses that were applying for permits, closing things out, uh, and getting their final certificates for, for occupancy. Um, as I've reported on this department all last year, they've done a wonderful job at making sure they're wildly efficient over there and bringing in some revenue for the town. Um, and they've gotten that department in good order. So I sat down with Cindy Valente, who works in the construction office over there, kind of runs that shop on a day-to-day -day basis, and she made some important call-outs that I wrote down here, and I want to quote her exactly. Per Cindy, 
But we have a solid team and have worked hard all year to improve the turnaround on complete permit applications. Grateful to our extended team at Harbor, thank you Christian, she's mentioned you and Tony specifically, uh, for being accessible always and helping out, as well as our team from the Department of Health, Carmen Giordano from the uh, Kennewood Fire Department, and our KPD. Working together as a team has helped improve our turnaround and assistance to the residents, business owners, and contractors here in Kenilworth. Uh, that's how you do it, right? We are creating an atmosphere where people can get things done, do it efficiently, bring money for the town, and everybody's smiling at the end of the day getting their permits. Uh, so well done to that department. And I have a call out of my own for Cindy herself, where she's been studying and working on a course uh, for a technical assistant to the construction official, um, and she has passed this course and completed it. So okay. she's just awaiting her certificate so she can apply for her license, and I'd like to shout her out. Well done, Cindy. So thank you, Mayor. That's all I've got from planning and zoning. Good report. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, <coughs> Recreation and Fire, uh, Councilman Scarice. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, quick Let's report. Um, for a <laughs> I get adjusted being the chair over here. Um, we know about uh, Rex so far. We're going to have a meeting after this. Uh, Basically, a lot of volunteer coaches have passed their background checks at this point, and the basketball season is in full swing. Uh, our fire department, I took a tour with uh, Chief Scuderi, and, um, and has had so many issues facing the fire department. Um, a lot of our trucks are very old. Some of the ones the 9, 1997, remember that the ladder truck seems like yesterday, but. Uh, it's way past it's really it's, it's service and uh, the biggest problem is the parts are hard to come by so we're, you know even if it's within a few years we got to start looking at that um, that and keeping up the equipment and uh, because that is dangerous if you don't have the proper equipment it, it, uh, you can get hurt and if it's not worse and uh, and even there's a lot of time out of service so even if if it's getting repaired constantly it's out of service Maybe uh, one time was like for eight weeks. So what happens when you have that emergency in between? Uh, we do have, you know, other towns can kind of cover each other, but at some point, you know, that, you know, they're going to get a little tired of it <laughs> because they need it too, and then we're running mm -hmm. their machines into the ground. So uh, something we'll have to play all talk with uh, uh, our financial officers and see what was uh, put aside for capital budget, or maybe something we might have to put more aside going forward so we can at least have a, an idea about when we could uh, maybe start replacing something. And that's all I have there. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Health, Education, and Human Services, Councilman uh, Giordano Pizarro. Uh, I attended the school board meeting last Monday night and um, Nan Shah, who is the student body representative, gave a report of all the activities and things that the students were doing. Um, Mr. Ganella reported that the construction work is on schedule. The HVAC work is being done at Brearley, five classrooms at a time, and Harding will be done in the summer. Uh, because the kids are younger, they don't want to shuffle them around classroom to classroom. 90% um, of the field demo is done. Again, working on schedule, no uh, problems noted. And um, the, the superintendent um, just noted that he was working with the various committees to make sure information is being shared quickly and clearly because there's so much going on there um, he doesn't want misinformation to get out so to be shared between the committees and the committees to properly disseminate it to all of the residents uh, their next meeting is february 12th the health department i met with the board president randy and chris one of our inspectors and leoni the registrar um, gave me a wealth of information of the health department versus the board of health and who does what and and all of the nuances that are the responsibility of that office was um, enlightening to me uh, their reorg is tomorrow along with the library's reorg so i'll be running back and forth across the street to get the appropriate information and to share it with everyone um, the health department department didn't have a listing of activities that they're planning yet. Maybe we'll have some information tomorrow um, and also the library. However, the library does 
have a wealth of uh, projects and, and events going on there. During the day, it's mostly for uh, toddlers and young children, and the evening is the adult activities. I would suggest calling the uh, library, 908-276-2451, or going on the library website, kenilworthlibrary.org, because there's a lot of different activities, all different days and times, um, and there's a lot to take advantage of over there. Social concerns, we don't have anything at the moment pressing. Of course, food is always necessary in the food bank, um, but the main thing is we really are hoping for more applications for the senior program director. It's on the website. Please apply. It's 20 hours a week. A man or a woman, I had a gentleman ask me, you know, could he apply? And I said, of course. Um, I never thought that people would think it was only something that, you know, a, a woman would be interested in or effective at. Um, so please apply. We really need to fill that position so that we can continue with the programs that have been established and really working well and helping our seniors. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, federal engineer. Afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Um, there's actually not too much going on in Kenilworth right now due to the weather. Uh, everything's kind of on hiatus until uh, the weather warms up. Um, it's just a few inspection jobs and um, a few residents complaints that we're taking um, one call at a time. Great. Okay. Thank you very uh, much. Chris. Christian, one second. We, um, I think we, we, we got some emails on Woodland Avenue. Um, Tony was supposed to go out there and check some flooding issues over there. He, he's been out, I think, injured. Yes. Um, do you have any updates on that specific street and if, if we've gone out there? Um, I'm not sure if we got out there. There's something, if you would forward me the information, I, I'll go out there. Because uh, I'm not sure when uh, Tony will be uh, talking to the office. OK, we could do that. But sure, I'll send you the email. I think everybody was on mm -hmm. that email. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Where's going? Under rain, then. Just, that, just that one on Woodlawn? Um, that was the one where the resident had gotten back to us. There were some others where well, we have the Pembroke. Pen to the Pembroke area. Um, you guys did send a letter out to them, so they know we didn't forget them because they used to come in. I think they gave up to a point. Um, now the rivers are voting into the property. I moved the fence three feet. And also uh, for flooding, the, the stream, that part is not covered. Some over by 6th Street, someone's covered, but their area is not covered. And uh, there was an issue maybe uh, we can do maybe dredge because it seems to be like a lot of debris accumulating over the years. Yeah, we, can, we can take a look at it and just yeah. see what, what recommendations we can. I don't think we're, we're allowed to dredge the, the I river, think, I don't unfortunately. Think we're under current not allowed to. I'm not sure you're allowed to dredge. Uh, you're not allowed to put equipment in, into the or along the banks of it. I, I think the only thing you could do is actually just clean it. Like well, um, with a shovel. Tony said he was right. sure, just follow, make sure he sent a letter to the residents so they know that. I can, I can, I can follow, follow up on that. Yeah, just let them know that we looked into what, what our options are, even if they are. You know, you know in Cranford, they, they do um, a community cleanup <clears throat> once a year in the river. I, I mean, it might be something we can talk about. Maybe getting our Boy Scouts involved and yeah, and because sure we can go in and debris. clean debris yeah. with our hands, with your right? Hands. You just can't put it. We can't yeah. bring right. machinery, right? Yeah, I don't you would be amazed what they pull out of the river in Cranford. <laughs> Tires and all it's kinds of stuff, cars. right? So I mean, it just might be something. Maybe we can try to, to put something together like that. Just well, a thought. You guys, scope it out and see if there is a lot of debris. Maybe we could organize something. I'm not sure. Okay. What, but unfortunately, that that's in between houses, in between houses, properties. There's no public land. Really, well, yeah. Are you allowed to clean brush out? I think you're allowed to clean. Yeah, I believe you're allowed to clean brush out. Okay, well, maybe it might help. Might be something we can uh, talk about putting something together yeah, you can't in the really spring see or it summer. Good because it's, it abuts to their back of their properties. And so I'm sure if we had a, north, a bunch of people willing to clean, they would oh, yeah, give yeah, us access. Can, but if these guys <laughs> say, yeah, there's a lot of garbage in there, we could definitely put something together. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Christian. Okay, Borough CFO. Uh, not so much to report on, uh, but, uh, besides the daily activities, uh, the funding to work was closing out uh, 2023, uh, opening up the year 2024. Um, uh, taxes 
are starting to come in. Just a reminder that the due date on the first quarter taxes is February 1st. Okay, thank you. Uh, borough Attorney. Mayor, I don't have much to report, uh, but for the next council meeting, uh, you will see uh, a few shared service agreements for the Department of Health, and I anticipate having a few ordinances. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, borough Administrator. Um, not too much. I will say that the dog license, uh, our big dog licenses are being renewed now. Just a reminder for everyone to come in and renew your license. We did mail our postcards out at the beginning of the year. Um, the response was pretty good because we're ahead of schedule, um, so we're moving along. Um, everyone, just a reminder to do it before the end of February because the late fee kicks in March 1st. Um, I just had two things. I was reached, um, I had the um, JC Promotions, who handles the street fair, did reach out. So I wanted to kind of put it out there and see if you're in favor of doing the street fair mm -hmm. again. Um, she wants to kind of just secure a date if we are still interested and put it out there. Um, she proposed Sunday, May 19th. Um, if anyone have any, you want to look at it, we can take a look. And um, I think it's, I mean, it seems so far I know, but they kind of get their calendar done for the year. So I still like it in the fall. It's not out there, right? You want me to see if that's an option? I mean, I can reach well, out I thought to it was always fun in the fall. I mean, I don't know how anyone else feels about that. It's been made for the last 10 years, though, right? Right. Yeah, we lost, we stopped it the one year, and then they, they didn't have any fall dates. That's why we moved it to the spring. Right. I think we stopped. It like everyone has them in the spring. We yeah. each town we yeah. week yeah. after week yeah. after week. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. have the October Fest, and it was Field. different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just yeah. I think that's why they moved it to the spring. But we could check and see if they have a fall. We used to call it Would the October Fest. Would everybody be interested in, in? It was the October. Possibly. Fest. The only thing is, yeah, if it goes too far into the fall and it's cold, people won't come out and walk like they do. Can be. September. Yeah, for early September. And one of the other <laughs> things to consider for that was uh, oh, daylight. Fall, daylight savings. It's dark. Oh, at five daylight, yes. The DPW had a hard time cleaning up, you know, once it's it gets dark. dark. Earlier. For, for later. And we have the fire department. Well, no, is everyone's coming with the dark? If you still want to push for it, we do have more portable lights now than we did before. Okay, excellent. Thank so you. So that's an option. All right. Oh, yeah. Does everybody want to give this? Excellent. Thank you. Does everyone want to give that some thought, and then the next council meeting we'll make a decision? Can, Can we, we lock wait? in the 19th just in case? But ask her what, because the Kettleworth Fire Department yeah, is always in August. Oh, we were thinking September. Fair in September. I don't care as long as it's a warmer month. You know, warmer time of year, so people do come out. So we had a great turnout the last couple. Of yeah, I mean, if you want to leave it in May, I'm okay with yeah. that. I just always loved it in the fall. I'm just making the suggestion. Yeah. What's that? Uh, the carve night, and then the uh, the police department does the national night out in the fall. There's a lot of activities going on in the fall. All right. Maybe. May, how about May 19th then? <laughs> there you go. Stick with May. May 19th. Okay. okay. Uh, the one other thing. Sorry, I'm um, Shirley from the his Maxwell. As you all know from the historical society did reach out um, they are looking to do uh, the soups on again this mm -hmm. year if everyone is in agreement Great. at the senior center um, she did propose preferably uh, March 21st it's a Thursday night uh, 6 to 8 p.m. similar to last year it was sold out I believe Shirley last mm -hmm. year was a big success. So does anyone have any concerns or? No. no. Okay. No. And then they also did ask about the community-wide garage sale, mm -hmm. which um, if everyone is in agreement, we can look at the time frames. We come up with dates. And uh, just so, I mean, I'm sure you realize it's tied into okay. any pickups that right. we may right. or may not do and kind of they plan it out. But we'll do that and you'll see a resolution on if we, um, if you're all in agreement at some yep. point. Okay. I'm in agreement. Great. Great. Thank question, you. Angela. Oh. Whatever happened to pursue and save and the town money on the decorations on the lampposts, we taking it down and storing it ourselves? We, we are doing that. Um, I did work with Greg, and um, he does have room. He, they um, and committed to taking them down for us. Um, so um, that's going to happen. So Excellent. we did let the company know. Thanks. So. 
Is that all? Yeah, yeah that's all. Thanks. Is there a motion to accept and approve committee reports? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have one ordinance for final adoption tonight. It's Ordinance 2024-01, introduced on January 3rd, 2024. An ordinance amending Chapter 91, Fees and Licenses, Article 3, Recreation Programs, to revise rates, clarify payment process, and establish non-resident rates and cancellation policies. Is there a motion to open the public for hearing on Ordinance 2024-01? I'll make that a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Does anyone have anything to say on this ordinance and this ordinance only? Please come forward and state your name and address. Okay, seeing no one, is there a motion to close the public hearing and adopt Ordinance 2024-01? Motion. Second. Roll call. Uh, Councilman Boyle. I'm saying. Councilman Finistrella? Yes. Councilwoman Giordano Paserno? No. Councilman Morrow? Yes. Councilman Scarice? Yes. Councilman Finner, uh, Zim Zimmerman? I'm sorry. Yes. Ordinance 2024-01 has been adopted. Okay, next for council consideration is the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve? Motion. Second. The consent agenda consists of resolutions 2024-57 through 2024-63. These resolutions will be approved by one motion. All items will be recorded individually in full in the minutes. Councilman Boyle. No, the consent agenda. Yes. Voting. Councilman Finistrella. Yes. Councilwoman Giordano Paserno. Yes. Councilman Morrow? Yes. Councilman Scarice? Yes. Councilman Zimmerman? Yes. Is there a motion to open the floor to the public? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Does anyone have anything to say for the good and well-being of Kenilworth? Please come forward and state your name and address. Good evening. Um, my name is Sylvia Ramirez. I live at 327 Maplewood Avenue. Hello. Hi. I've been in uh, Maplewood Avenue for nine months. Mm -hmm. I was here in September for the meeting, and I was told that Maplewood Avenue was going to be uh, fixed. Uh, we have flood. We have, uh, it's like an ice uh, ring, a skating ring. I it's yep. very dangerous. At the end of the block, right? Yes. Yes, I, I remember. Pictures last time I yes, I remember. I, I, and I, do you have an update on this, Christian? Because Tony did say that it was going to be addressed. It was supposed to be repaved, right, and yeah, addressed? It's part, it's part of the 2023 road program. It's okay. Just on pause until the weather clears up. Uh, they really can't do any concrete or paving. But it's on the agenda. It's going to be paved. It's yes, going it to be going fixed. To be paved, curved, and drains will be put in. Uh, okay. Sorry, sorry, it's just taking a little That's time. Okay. It's going to be taken care of. They are for the neighbor to walk in I see that to walk onto the yes. onto the property. But it's like very muddy. I see this. Bad. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to take care of it for you, of course. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's, yeah, it is scheduled. It just yep. didn't get done yet. Just didn't get there yet. Okay. Do you want these back? Or do no, you want... no, no, you can't. Okay. Get back. <laughs> um, this gentleman. I'll keep them to all rem okay. keep reminding myself about all right, your work. Thank you. This is a gentleman that would like to say something, but he only speaks Spanish, but he has a letter that he wants me to read for you. Is that the of course, that? of course. Yes, of course. Yeah, Mayor, uh, in regards to that ice, the ice wall, mm -hmm. the shares were. Uh, we have a new machine that we're, that we're given as a demo. We're going to bring it over there so it's strong enough to break up the ice. And then great. Friday, because we closed in a markout, um, we're going to put in a temporary drainage to alleviate uh, that pulling effect until the construction. It was something Tony and I came up with. That's awesome. Yeah, great. It was, it was all in Tony's direction, but um, he knew it was going to take care of that weather permit. Excellent. Thank you, Greg. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Great job, and great job on all the snow removal and ice and everything. Thank you. You've been out last Sunday, and I, we're home, and you're out there working, and we appreciate it. I appreciate that. Okay. 
Okay, um, he's, he has a letter here. Uh, I don't know who's Miss Angela Lazari. That's what it's about. Okay. okay, this is what he's saying. I am writing to you to present myself, Gilden Davila. That's him. Uh, he's 80 years old, Venezuelan. I have the honor to inform you that I left Venezuela in October of 2021 with my passport visa granted for 10 years by virtue of the very critical situation from my country. I moved to United States, North America. I came to visit my daughter, Ana Maria Guilen de Martinez. My daughter, Ana Maria, has been living here in the U.S. for 20 years and is a religion, religious woman. She's a member of the Seventh-day Adventure Church. I have been residing with my daughter for two years. My daughter's husband uh, passed away two years ago with two minor children. My daughter is now required to work to support her children and myself, her father. By virtue, it is my wish, Ms. Mrs. Angela Lazaro, to inform you that I, Mr. Guillen David, have the diploma and credentials as a chaplain. Therefore, my desire is to render you my services and to make myself useful. For example, police work, firemen work, or as a crossing guard for school pedestrian service, that I will include children, that include children, adults, and seniors within this area, Kenilworth, New Jersey, near my residence. I sincerely hope and await for your help and support so that I can support, sponsor me and my, my daughter, so that I may help my daughter financially. May God bless you and keep you today, tomorrow, and always safe. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. He says that this is all for you, and if you can please sign that you receive it. Oh, sure. <laughs> Oh, that was so nice of you. He was asking me. Yeah, thank you. Okay, this is from This is from his church. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank I want to thank everyone. We have the Boy Scouts here um, this evening. Thank you for being here. Um, hope everyone stays safe in this cold weather and ice. Be careful. Uh, does anyone else have anything to say for the good and welfare of the borough? Uh, I'd like to actually, Greg, you're here, you're staring, so I, I just want to ask a question. Uh, some of the residents came out this morning and slip in and slide in. And, uh, I just, do we have like a protocol for salting um, in the freezing with the rain and things? Um, we go out when the storm is active and we take care of it up until like afterwards. And if there's a refreeze, we ask residents to call and off hours call the police and then they'll call us back out. And it's during the business hours, 6 to 3, to call our office and we'll respond accordingly. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And, and on that topic, too, I think uh, was mentioned, the Little League, too, is <clears throat> in need of some salting, and if anybody has any free time. <clears throat> I know they tried to get it done on their own, but I guess with new personnel there, and um, if anybody, I mean, you're right next door, I mean, that would be great. Yeah, I wasn't aware that um, that was a property we would maintain. I know that we own the property and that uh, they leased the property from us. Um, I'm just not sure who's responsible for the parking lot. That's why we didn't come over there. But if you want me to go over there and take care of it, we'll take care of it. Excellent. Right. Thanks. You're welcome. 
Is yeah. it just a one-time deal for them to salt it this time, or is it something? Who's taking care of it in the past? Just out of curiosity. Is it the, the Little League? I, I asked a member of the Little League organization, and he said that in the past they take care of themselves, but it shouldn't give me a reason as to why they didn't do it this time. Yeah, there's been a new regime, and are they aware that they're supposed to take care of it? That might be the problem. Right. Whoever's I'll, I'll running it, it maybe you should mention to them that generally the Little League takes care of the property. Right. Let's see what half goes. Do you mind if I mention one thing, Mayor? Of course I not. I did. Um, we joined the new GIF. I know you all are aware. Mm -hmm. um, we did have our first meeting last week. I met with them, and I had a an initial meeting with them in Zoom to just be introduced, and then we had our first official meeting last week. I was very impressed, I will say. Great. Um, so I think it's, it's going to be a good thing. very significant savings to the barrel and, as and well. It is, yes. and the way they managed, it was very professional and um, well run. So I'm good. looking forward to working with them. Awesome. So good job. Great. OK. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. All in favor? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>